Good evening. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Danielle Cardona. And I'm Amanda Lojeski. We start with breaking news in Center City. Two teenagers are in critical condition after a stabbing at the SEPTA station yesterday afternoon. Two teenage boys were in a fight with two suspects near the 8th and Market Street station. One of the boys was stabbed in the neck, stomach, and wrist. The other boy was stabbed in the chest, stomach, and cut on the wrist. The boys were rushed to separate hospitals, and police are still looking for a male and female suspect. Both are believed to be teenagers. And now to Bucks County. County Firefighters respond to a deadly fire at the Bush House Hotel in Quakertown this morning around 9 a.m. One person was reported dead and the other 50 people involved in the fire refused medical treatment. The investigation continues to find out what sparked the fire. Bill Cosby was convicted Thursday of drugging and molesting a woman in the first big celebrity trial of the Me Too era, completing the spectacular late-life downfall of a comedian who broke racial barriers in Hollywood on his way to TV stardom as America's dad. Cosby, who is 80 years old, could end the spending years in prison after a jury concluded and the sexual employee Andrea Constant at a suburban Philadelphia home in 2004. He claimed the encounter was consensual. While one celebrity may be put in jail, one was just released. Dedicated fans gathered outside of the State Correctional Institution in Chester on Tuesday as rapper Meek Mill was released from prison. Mill was accused of violating his probation and was sentenced to two to four years in prison after a major uproar from the community and fans claiming that Mill was wrongly accused. In an interview with Lester Holt, Mill said, I've got a lot of responsibility. Although I am blessed to have the resources to fight this unjust situation, I understand that many people of color across the country do not have that luxury, and I plan to use my platform to shine a light on those issues. And the Broad Street Run is vastly approaching. The run will be hosted on Saturday, May 6th. Not a runner? Well, the Blue Cross Broad Street Run is still for you. There are many ways to be involved. In 2016, there was a total of 40,000 runners. So the more volunteers on race day, the smoother that race will run. Check out thebroadstreetrun.com for more information on ways to get involved and specifics for race day. The weather has certainly started to warm up. Mike, is the weather going to stay warm from now on out? Amanda, it is definitely looking like it, as you can see by all the beautiful activities going on here in Old Main Field. Friday is going to be mostly cloudy with a high of 68 and a low of 49. Saturday looks to be more of the same with partly cloudy skies and a high of 67 and a low of 45. Sunday will be sunny with a high of 59 and a low of 45. The sun will stick around for the following days as Monday will be sunny with a high of 71 and a low of 53. Tuesday will be a high of 77 and a low of 59, while Wednesday will also be sunny with a high of 79 and a low of 57. Thursday will continue to be mostly sunny with a high of 71 and a low of 56. So we're seeing a little bit of a back and forth, but it looks like it may finally start to feel like spring. And let's hope that's the case as we power through our finals and get motivated by this beautiful weather. Now back to the studio with Amanda and Danielle. Well, I think we're all liking those upper 70s, Mike. Thanks for finally bringing us those long-needed te long temperatures. Well, Student Project Day is starting tomorrow at 8 a.m. To see, student project, see the Student Day Project schedule, go to Widener University's homepage and search Student Project Day. If you're an underclassman, come out to see this year's senior projects so you know what to expect for next year. Your friends and classmates have worked so hard this school year, so come out and support them during their presentations. April is the National Month of Hope, so why not give hope to people that need it most? One Communications Capstone Group is working with the Front Row Foundation. They put people of all ages with health challenges in the front row of their favorite live event. Students will be raffling, selling t raffle tickets next week in the University Center from 12 to 2. Prizes range from player autographs, tickets, gift cards, skydiving excursions, and much more. Cash and Venmo will be accepted, and all proceeds will benefit the national nonprofit. Well, hey, Matt and Nick, any news on our latest sports teams and in the area? Well, Amanda, on Monday, the Widener Pride baseball team won 11-5 over Cabrini. The star of the day was junior Brennan Taylor, who went 4-4 four four with two runs. Matthew Garino picked up the win for the Pride as he recorded six strikeouts through seven innings. The win also saw Dylan Pfeiffer and Steven DeBellis each hit home runs. The Pride will be back in action Friday as they host the Hood Blazers. Over the weekend, the Widener Pride men's lacrosse team picked up the road win against Lebanon Valley. Kevin Kirby was the key player for the Pride as he contributed three of the seven goals. 
Widener Comms own Gavin Kirkwood scored twice, as well as Nick Delorio picking up three points on the day. The Pride will close out their season at Stevenson. Widener women's lacrosse also had their hands full with Lebanon Valley over the weekend, but sadly came up short against the Dutchman. Kelly Lynch and Emma DeGilio both picked up three points on the day, and Melanie Burt recorded a big three goals for the Pride. The women's team will also close out their season hosting Stevenson. And finally this weekend, Widener softball won two big games in the 2018 strikeout for cancer doubleheader. Katie Sterling had a stellar Saturday as she went four for seven combined with a home run and a staggering eight RBIs. Widener also had two pitchers toss complete games as Katie Rawbuck picked up the first win and, Belli and Bella Botini picked up the second. The Pride will close out this season hosting Hood. The, the women's rugby team this past weekend became EPRU champions when they battled it out in Delaware. This is the second time the team has made history this year. They're heading to Pittsburgh to compete on the national level. Good luck, ladies, and bring home the gold. Now, Nick, Philly has a lot of sports going on right now. What's been going on? Well, before we can really get to the good, we must talk about the inherently negative, as the Philadelphia Flyers were eliminated from playoff contention this week by the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Flyers had battled back in Game 5 to skate off elimination, but couldn't stop the overpowered Penguins offense in Game 6, losing by a score of 8-4. to four. Excuse me, eight to five. The uh, Penguins were led by Captain Sidney Crosby as well as Young Guns Jake Gunsel and Brian Dumoulin. The Penguins outscoring the Flyers twenty-eight to fifteen throughout the six-game series. Flyers center Sean Couturier and defenseman Ivan Provorov were revealed to be playing through injuries during this playoff series and are commended for their excellent play despite elimination. As mentioned earlier, the 76ers uh, were able to bring home Philadelphia's own Meek Mill and faced off against the Heat in the fifth game of their series where the Sixers won in a 104-91 victory. When the game was kicked off, four hours before, obviously, Meek Mill was released and was able to leave the Chester prison with part owner Michael Rubin driving, who drove there, and left with Meek Mill in a helicopter. Meek was also given the opportunity to open the game's bell ringing ceremony and the bell tolled for the Heat as soon as Meek's name was announced over the PA system. The Sixers' next opponent will be determined by the end of round one. The Phillies have been hot, maintaining a 14-7 record and projected to be the winner of the National League East Division, according to Baseball pr uh, Prospectus. The Phillies had a rough start, after, but after a 20-1 explosion against the Marlins on April 7th, the Phillies have gone a stellar 11-3 with three series sweeps against the Reds, Rays, and Pirates. And finally, our beloved world champion Eagles were able to restructure the contracts of a number of players this offseason, most recently right guard Brandon Brooks, who took to Twitter to say, quote, if you're wondering about the restructure, I get four mil now, four mil by September 1st with a couple hundred thousand over the season. The reason I did it was because the Super Bowl MVP deserved more money. At Nick Foles, love you, bro. Hashtag whatever it takes. The Eagles are scheduled to take on the Atlanta Falcons for week one of next season on September 6th, 2018, 820 p.m. Danielle and Amanda, what other events can students keep an eye out for in the last few weeks of this semester? Well, Nick, now that the semester is coming to a close, check out the show students have been preparing all semester long for. Widener Dance Company kicks off their recital on Thursday, May 3rd at 8 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at the door for $2 with a Widener ID or $5 for anyone else. There will be refreshments available for purchase. Can't make it on Thursday? They also have a show on Friday, May 4th at 8 p.m. and Saturday, May 5th at 12 p.m. Part of the proceeds will go towards the Front Row Foundation. If you can't make it to the Front Row Foundation's raffles during the day, those raffles will also be available at the recital. Seniors, you have done so much during your four years here at Widener, but now it's your chance to leave your last fall print. Widener's senior class gift is a fund that goes directly towards providing more financial aid for Widener students. Donate any amount of money that you, and you will be invited to the Senior Toast. This event will be an open bar and a networking opportunity. The Senior Toast is two weeks away, so help the Senior Class Gift reach their goal of $8,000. Well, that's all we have for you for the rest of the semester. Thank you for allowing us to be your voice on Widener's campus. I will miss being a part of this crew, and I cannot wait to come back and see all the incredible things our campus and student body will do and become a part of. Remember, graduation is on May 19th at 9.30 a.m. on Memorial Field. Thank you to Widener University, my professors and peers for giving us an incredible experience here and preparing us for the next step. I will forever embrace being a part of the Pride. And as Danielle said, I would like to thank you all for allowing us all to be your voice here on Widener's campus too. I also, wanna, I also will miss being a part of this wonderful crew and cannot wait to come back here to see how much Widener has changed since I've left. 
I also want to thank Widener University, my professors, and all my peers for making my experience here at Widener truly unforgettable. And thank you for preparing me for the next step as I enter the real world. On behalf of the seniors here at Widener Productions, we wish you all success in finishing up your senior in your school year and hope you join us next year as our fellow crew members continue to work effortlessly to bring you the latest news here on campus and in the world. Thank you and have a great evening.